Hi, my name is Dean Barr, and I write novels of sex, suspense, and satire. My newest novel, Saving Grace, a psychological thriller, is now out in both paperback and uh, ebook. So please check it out wherever you find your great new reads. Today on Author Groupie, I'm interviewing Lori Robbins. And if the name sounds familiar, it's because she won the Silver Fashion Award for her first book, Lesson Plan for Murder. And she's just started a new series involving the world of professional ballet. So you'll definitely want to hear what she has to say about the first book in the series, Murder in First Position. Sit back, relax, enjoy, and as always, stay safe. Welcome to another edition of Author Groupie. I'm here with Lori Robbins, who was born in Brooklyn and began dancing at age 16 and launched her professional career three years later. She studied modern dance at the Martha Graham School and she danced ballet with the New York Conservatory of Dance. She's performed with a number of uh, regional modern and ballet companies, including Ballet Hispanico, the Del Mo Des Moines Ballet, and St. Louis a Concert Ballet. After 10 very lean years, is that a joke? <laughs> Okay. As, a, as a dancer, um, she attended Hunter College, graduating summa cum laude with a major in British literature and a minor in classics. Uh, her first mystery, Lesson Plan for Murder, which was absolutely wonderful, won the Silver Falchion, pronounce that right, Falchion? Uh, award for Best Cozy Mystery and was a finalist in the Reader's Choice and the Indie Book Awards, and it is terrific, so please pick that up. Murder in First Position is the first in her new mystery series published by Level Best Books. This work is set in the world of professional ballet, something she obviously knows a lot about, and uh, she's currently working on the second book in both series, uh, she's the vice president of the New York chapter of Sisters in Crime, which is where I know Lori from since we serve on the board together. And she is an expert in the homicidal impulses everyday life inspires. So welcome to Author Groupie, Lori. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. So, so writing is not your first career. Tell us um, how you began writing books and what the process was like. Sure. Well, as you mentioned, my first career was as a dancer. And, but I'd always been a very avid reader and writer from the time that I was very young. Um, after I retired after about 10 years of dancing and um, I just kind of did the natural thing, which was follow the reading and writing thing into a degree in English. I'm not sure you can, and I became an English teacher. I'm not sure you can really study language like that without thinking at some point, I think I'd like to try that. Maybe I can, put all these little scribblings together and actually write a book. So that's how it, that happened. Terrific. Well, I love that I've read the new book and I think it's terrific. What was your inspiration? Just all the lingering thoughts of, of killing other dancers while you're in the ballet? You know, the temptation is always there. <laughs> but uh, Well, first of all, I think, you know, there's just something so inherently dramatic about that life and kind of fascinating at the same time. Um, for me personally, I enjoy reading books where the author has some kind of specialized knowledge. And you kind of get a window into a different life that goes along with the mystery. So that was part of it. Uh, I would say the other part was just um, underneath the, makeup and very elaborate costumes and all of the show. Um, it's a very vulnerable life that you lead and even dangerous in some ways, not in the way that it is in my book, of course, but the drama and the emotions run very high. And so it just seemed like a natural for me to just try and set a book in the dance world. Well, I thought it was fascinating. I kept picturing you as the main character. <laughs> I couldn't stop myself since I know you. Um, <laughs> now it's your second book. Do the yeah. two share any similarities other than the fact that the people that people die in both? Yes, there is that. Um, I would say that if you looked at them on the surface, there are actually a lot of differences that would be the first thing that you would notice. Uh, one is set in a small town and the other one in New York City. One has a younger and single protagonist. And my first book had a married protagonist with teenage children. However, they're 
both amateur sleuths. They both have relationship issues. I would say somewhat a tortured family dynamic, which I also find really interesting. Yeah. And um, they're kind of dragged into that. So you have the ordinary person who's put into an extraordinary position. And I would, I would say they definitely share that. Yeah. Okay, terrific. And uh, hold on just one second. What have I done? <laughs> Here we go. Sorry. Um, you write murder mysteries and yet you have a lot of humor, which I totally appreciate. Why, why is that? I can't help myself. I'm not that funny in real life. I just, I'm not. Like, it's not like I'm a laugh a minute. And yet when I sit down to write, it just kind of comes out of me. Why is that? I'm not sure. Maybe it's just, um, well, as you know very well as a writer, no matter how invested you are in what you're doing, some part of you was always kind of looking at it from the outside. And um, what I see, I find funny. So that's, I've tried not to be funny. I'm, I'll let you know how it's going. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate snark in all writing. So I, I love that part of your book. Have you thought of writing outside of the mystery genre? I have, um, if I could get myself to not be funny or maybe in spite of it, I used to love reading, you know, those sort of long multi-generational family sagas where, you know, things kind of spill over from one generation into the next. And that would be a very big undertaking, but definitely one that intrigues me on some level, like to just, um, have an expanse that's also historical and, and that maybe brings us into contemporary life. So I find that pretty interesting and maybe someday I'll try my hand at it. So like the thorn birds or Michener, or, yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a huge undertaking. That would be great. Yes, well, it's in the future, hopefully. So you write in the first person, why is that? Because I know a lot of people prefer writing in third. I tried and I couldn't do it. It's kind of like with the humor. It's just, um, I, I tried very hard to write in the third person because I think that's a nice way to frame a mystery novel. So all of the clues are not coming out of uh, the protagonist's point of view. But I find once I get into the head of my character, I am so, I'm, I'm seeing with her eyes and I'm, hearing what she's thinking. And um, even though I'm not my protagonist at all, um, I feel as if it, I automatically filter things through that person's experience. And um, it's just uncomfortable. It just kind of comes out of me very easily. So I don't know, again, if it's a choice or it's just kind of uh, where, I, where I live. It has to be whatever comes out of you naturally. Otherwise, yeah. I think it sounds stilted. So it works for you. That's that's all that matters. Um, do you obviously you do see yourself in your characters? Um, I'm not sure about that. I'm not 100 percent sure. It's more like once I create the character, I start to see things through her eyes. So it's not, a, it's not really that I'm that character, but I start to experience her story through her eyes, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, I have given my secondary characters a few of my personal quirks, but um, I would say my main characters, probably just the sense of humor. That's it. Not really anything else. Yeah. Do you um, do any of your, char any your characters based on people you know? Rarely. Um, they're always going to be, as you know very well, something will inspire you. You'll put pieces of things and people that you know into different characters. Um, only once did I really base a character almost completely on another human being. And it was so unpleasant a person that when I wrote the book, I changed the gender because I didn't want to get sued for slander or something. It was really... Um, it was someone I wasn't fond of. I didn't kill this person, by the way. I let them live to tell their story again. But um, for the most part, they're more like an accumulation of, uh, of different characters, you know, different people I know 
things about them will work their way into. Um, okay. Oh, wait a minute. I have to tell you something else. Okay. None of the sisters are anything at all like my sister. Okay. <laughs> this is very important. And um, my sister is beautiful and she's, we're very close and she's wonderful and she's talented and perfect in every single way. However, I have created some flawed sisters. And so I feel that I must say that none of my sisters are based on my sister. Okay, because you do have a perfect sister there in, in the book that I read. All right, well, that's kind of a funny story because <laughs> after my first book, where the sister is quite difficult, in the second book, I gave my character a perfect sister and I presented it to my sister. And she said, and I quote, but no one's gonna think that's me. So, <laughs> I said, look, she's perfect. So, uh, luckily well, was, she also has a good sense of humor. So how and when did you become interested in dance? Cause it was pretty young. Um, well, I was 16 years old and um, I saw in the newspaper this guy that I'd heard of and he was incredibly good looking and that was Rudolf Nureyev. So I'm really dating myself and I had to go and I don't know why, but I was kind of interested and I fell in love and I walked out of the Metropolitan Opera House at Lincoln Center and I just said, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to devote my life to it. And I was 16. I was way too old. You can't start dancing at that age. But I was 16, so I didn't care. And um, I graduated high school a year early, and I just started dancing right away. And, um, and that was that. It was completely crazy, but uh, no regrets. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun, too. I still dance. I take ballet classes and I'm very involved in the dance world. Do you take ballet classes in the city or out in the suburbs? Uh, well, now I'm actually taking it in this room. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I take class at a couple of different studios at New Jersey Ballet, um, at Heart in Motion, which is another New Jersey place. And when I'm in the city, I take class at Steps, which is the inspiration for one of the settings in is actually steps. So um, yeah. I used, to, so, uh, I, used, I used to take class at uh, ballet arts at Carnegie Hall because my mother was a ballerina really? up until That's age 16. I don't even know if it's still open. Um, she was a ballerina until she was 16 and she danced into a hole and that was yeah. the end of her career. So oh there was some yeah. sort of hole on the floor. So, so I, I, that's, I think another reason I had interest in your book yeah. was that I, I could see my mom. Um, tell me if any part of your book is based on any real life experience. I would say not a lot. Oh, well, hold on. The food part, a hundred percent. Without a doubt, the food part, yes. Uh, the Excedrin and the Advil, without a doubt. I'm a huge fan of pain relievers. So the Excedrin, the Advil, the coffee, the Diet Coke, and the red wine, 100%. Well, uh, did you feel that your training as a dancer influenced you as a writer? Yes, it did. It truly did. Um, I just think that um, when you dance, you're just completely, um, you have to concentrate physically and mentally. You have to concentrate so much that you're not aware that you're concentrating. And that definitely influenced me as a writer. Just to, when I'm writing, I just focus on what I'm doing. Uh, I would say the downside of it is I am maybe the worst multitasker you will ever meet. And if I'm doing one thing, it almost doesn't matter what it is. And someone talks to me, I'll like, I'll smile and I'll nod. Like I've heard everything that you said, but I actually haven't heard anything. So the positive side is that I can definitely focus on my writing when I'm writing. And the other part of it is just, I, I haven't actually talked or, you know, <laughs> I, I haven't actually paid any attention at all. 
I completely but get that. <laughs> I completely get that. I'm the same way. Um, I noticed that there was a terrific amount of competitiveness in, in the professional dance world that was reflected in your book. Um, how is, is that really what it's like? Because it was like uh, theatrical competitiveness uh, to the 10th degree almost. Well, again, if you're asking about real life or you know how it relates to my experience, I that competitiveness is very real. Um, I um, I personally have stabbed very few people in the back, but it exists because you're all competing for a very small number of spaces and roles and so on. But once you get into a company, I find that dancers really like writers are extraordinarily kind and generous and they'll do anything for you and they'll pick you up when you're down and uh, take you out for a drink or an ice cream. And uh, so there is a, a lot more camaraderie than most of what I put in the book for dramatic reasons. So I tried to hint at that with uh, Lee's uh, relationship with her very good friend who's left the company. And right. so she has this best friend who's no longer dancing. I, I, I definitely wanted to include that there are those elements as well. Just strong camaraderie, you're all in it together. And my best friends are still dancers. Wonderful. All of my friends are, well, now they're all former dancers, but uh, yeah, so there's, yeah. Both sides of it. When you're at a, when you're in audition, you're competing. Like there's, you are. Um, but once you're in the company, you're part of the same family. Got it. So what are, since this is the first of a series, what are the rewards and challenges in writing a series? Um, for me, I would say the rewards are that I don't have to leave those characters behind. We've gotten to be good friends. I would say the challenge is, well, so for example, your book, Saving Grace, your character goes through such an arc of growth and development. And it's, um, it's a very, you know, aside from the suspense and all of that stuff. It's a very satisfying read. Thank you. So I love, well, you know, I love the book. Thank you. But if you take a character like Grace, the challenge would be to get her at the end and then put her in another challenging situation. You know, we've, we've been with her, we're rooting for her. And so how do you take your character who's grown so much and kind of make her vulnerable again and um, I think that, that that's probably the challenge for uh, in writing a series. I mean, I, I am in the middle of writing a second book in both series. And, and so uh, that was the initial challenge. How do I do that? In my book, the second, the second book would be um, the secondary characters having their own detective agency. Oh, I love that. And Grace sort of fades. And that's, it was originally supposed to be the Joe Hack mystery series. Wow. Yeah, you have a great secondary cast of characters. I think any one of them could probably yeah. set up a new series. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's where that was going to go, if, if yeah. I do that. <laughs> right. Well, she's so compelling a character. That, Thank um, you. Yeah, I can Thank you. see that, sure. So what is Leia's next adventure, your main character? Uh, I don't think I'm giving too much away to say that she finds another dead body. Okay. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. Someone else is going to die. Um, uh, so the way that I've sort of brought her along is uh, without giving anything at all away is there are two men in her life when we say goodbye to her at the end of murder in first position, there are two men in her life and she begins the book with one of them. Okay. Yeah. That's part of the mystery. And um, her mother, who I find hilarious, is plays a very, very prominent role in this book as well. So oh, good. I, I like the sure mother. That, yeah. Yeah. I just have to make sure she doesn't suck the air out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so I'm excited that uh, she's going to pick one of those two guys because both of them were interesting to me. So great me for too. her. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, because when you talk about dating yourself, that's the only action I get anymore. <laughs> oh, absolutely. That's it. I date myself. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to when we were talking about camaraderie. What do you find most rewarding about being part of a professional organization like Sisters in Crime? I could not have imagined um, how much um, support and expertise that I got from joining. I was not a published author when I joined. I didn't have anything going on. And I felt very shy about showing up with all of these authors who had published books. And it turned out that in some sense, everyone was um, so generous in terms of sharing their experiences with getting published or, um, you know, or with the writing process overall. And I would say it's one of the best things I ever did. It really helped me as a writer. And um, I miss meeting in person because sometimes the best part of being going to a meeting was going out to dinner afterwards. I learned so much sitting in Sammy's Noodle House and listening to all of these other writers talk about what they were working on and uh, where they were in the process of their writing. So it has definitely been a wonderful experience and like you, I can't say enough about the generosity of, um, of other writers. I don't yeah. know if it's like this for all writers, but I definitely found that in the mystery writing community, people will do anything for you. Yeah, we have an especially good group of people and very, very talented as well. And uh, I just, on my part, I think that if you're gonna get the most out of a group like that by joining the board as we have, you yes. get to really know people so much better. Um, and I'm very happy that we're both on that board. Um, so how would you like to read us a few pages from Murder in First Position? Sure, I'd love to. I'm going to switch you on. Okay. Um, can we pause for one second? Sorry. Uh, okay, got it. Okay. Okay, fine. So this is chapter one. <laughs> And each chapter starts with a quotation. And this one says, I don't want dancers who want to dance. I want dancers who have to dance. And that's George Balanchine. I was the girl all the other kids wanted to kill. Skinny, pretty, and confident. I was the target of much envy and very little affection. I realized later that people resented my extreme disinterest in their lives, but it was never personal because all I ever cared about was ballet. These days, I wasn't quite so dismissive. I wouldn't reveal the exact number of years that had passed since high school, but I would admit that while my former classmates were still young, I was old. Not too old to get pregnant and not too old to make partner in a law firm, but definitely old for a ballerina trying to make a comeback. And for me, nothing else counted. I wasn't bitter. One minute you were the newest baby ballerina and the darling of every critic. The next thing you knew, you were having knee surgery and the New York Times dancer was faintly praising you for your mature artistry, which was ballet speak for time to retire. But I wasn't ready to hang up my point shoes and Brian Lester was my ticket to the future. Brian was only a few years my junior. As a performer, he was in his prime, but as a choreographer, he was a whiz kid. I helped him get started and get noticed. And now that ballet companies and Broadway were begging him to jeter with them, it was time to cash in every asset I'd amassed in that particular bank account. And that's how she starts off. Yeah, that's terrific. And you know, you're such, such a very good reader. Oh, thanks. <laughs> So I, I heartily recommend this book. Uh, when does it debut? I know it's on for pre-order now. It comes out. It is. It comes out on November 24th. And um, the ebook now is on pre-orders on Amazon and hopefully the paperback very soon. Yeah, it was excellent. And I do urge people to order it. I was lucky enough to read um, an advanced reader copy. 
uh, I heartily recommend it. Thank you so much, Lori, for spending some time with me today. Uh, John, appreciate it. It was really my pleasure. Thank you so much. Oh, and I, as always, stay safe. Yes, you too. Thank you. Over the river to the city, Buffalo. Tobooth takes my money.